Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor SF Walker. I'm here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world, and today, We look at connected, the surprising power of our social networks and how they shape our lives by Nicholas Christakis and James Fowler. Notions of collective guilt and collective revenge that underlie cascades of violence seem strange only when we regard responsibility as a personal attribute. Yet in many settings, morality resides in groups rather than in individuals. And a further clue to the collective nature of violence is that it tends to be a public, not a private phenomenon. Two-thirds of the acts of interpersonal violence in the United States are witnessed by third parties, and this fraction approaches three-fourths amongst young people. Just as it is often said, the friend of my friend is my friend, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So too, the friend of my enemy is my enemy. These aphorisms encapsulate certain truths about animosity, and about affection, but they also convey a fundamental aspect of our humanity, our connection. Psychologist Stanley Milgram's famous sidewalk experiment illustrates the importance of reinforcement from multiple people. On two cold winter afternoons in New York City in 1968, Milgram observed the behavior of 1,424 pedestrians as they walked along a 50-foot length of street. He positioned stimulus crowds ranging in size from 1 to 15 research assistants on the sidewalk. On cue, these artificial crowds would stop and look at a window on the sixth floor of a nearby building. For precisely one minute. There was nothing interesting in the window, just another guy working for Milgram. The results were filmed and assistants later counted the number of people who stopped or looked where the stimulus crowd was looking. While 4% of the pedestrians stopped alongside a crowd composed of a single individual looking up, 40% stopped when there were 15 people in the stimulus crowd. Evidently, the decisions of passerby to copy a behavior were influenced by the size of the crowd exhibiting it. And an even larger percentage of pedestrians copied the behavior incompletely, meaning they looked up in the direction of the stimulus crowd's gaze but they did not stop. While one person influenced 42% of passerbys to look up, 86% of passerbys looked up if 15 people were looking up as well. More interesting than this difference, however, was that a stimulus crowd of five people was able to induce almost as many passerbys to look as 15 people did. Our connectedness carries with it radical implications that may help, be, may help us to understand social condition. Social networks have value precisely because they can help us to achieve what we could not achieve on our own. Social networks are creative, and what these networks create does not belong to any one individual. It is shared by all those in the network. And in this way, a social network is like a commonly owned forest. We all stand to benefit from it, but we also must work together 
to ensure it remains healthy and productive. This means that social networks require tending by individuals, by groups, and by institutions, while social networks are fundamentally and distinctively human and ubiquitous, they should not be taken for granted. People imitate the facial expressions of others. Then, as a direct result, they come to feel as others do. This is called affective afference, or the facial feedback theory, since the path of the signals is from the muscles of the face to the brain rather than the more usual afferent pathways from the brain to the muscles. The beneficial effects of facial expressions on a person's mood are among the reasons, for example, that telephone operators are trained to smile when they work, even though the person at the other, work, well, at the other end of the line cannot see them. This theory also explains why it helps to smile when your heart is breaking. Epidemics of emotional states have been reported on for centuries. They have just not involved laughter, like the Bokoba outbreak, when emotions spread from person to person and affect large numbers of people. It is now called massive psychogenic illness, MPI, rather than the old-fashioned and more poetic epidemic hysteria. Massive psychogenic illness is a specifically social phenomenon involving otherwise healthy people in a psychological cascade. Like a single startled buffalo within a herd, a single emotional reaction in one person can sometimes cause many others to feel the same thing, creating an emotional stampede. The pure anxiety type. People may feel a variety of physical symptoms, including abdominal pain, headache, fainting, shortness of breath, nausea, dizziness, and so on. In the motor type, people may engage in hysterical dancing, pseudo seizures, and yes, laughing. Though the actual feelings underlying these behaviors are fear or anxiety, both types of MPI thus involve the same basic psychological processes. Our unavoidable embeddedness in social networks means that events occurring in other people, whether we know them or not, can ripple through the network and affect us. A key factor in determining our health is the health of others. We are affected not only by the health and behavior of our partners and friends, but also by the health and behavior of hundreds of thousands of people in our extended social network. Most people know little about how the health of the public is protected. And what we do know, we think about in very self-oriented terms. The Surgeon General's warning on the side of a cigarette pack or the nutritional labels and foods are targeted at individual users, not at the community as a whole. We do not ordinarily appreciate the ways in which one person choosing certain behaviors affects the health of others and why this provides a basis for public health. Social networks can be difficult to understand, in part because they are difficult to manipulate. We cannot give you a friend the way we might give you a placebo. But if we could somehow strand a group of strangers on a desert island and watch how they become connected and for what purpose, we might be able to observe social networks as if we were conducting an experiment. Now, this does not sound like something that could be done, except this has been done, and not by curious social scientists, but by television producers. Friendship and loyalty have trumped self-interest. This is exactly the dilemma most of us face every day. Do we help our friends 
or do we help ourselves? And what are the consequences? Will we look dumb if we help others? Will we look mean if we do not? Is it possible to be nice and survive? And how can we possibly make these decisions when we have many friends in a dancing pattern of shifting alliances and interests? The internet makes possible new social forms that are radical modifications of existing types of networks, interactions in four ways. Number one, enormity. A vast increase in the scale of our networks and the numbers of people that might be reached to join them. Number two, community. A broadening of the scale by which we can share information and contribute to collective efforts. Number three, specificity. An impressive increase in the particularity of the ties we can form. And number four, virtuality. The ability to assume virtual identities. The networks we create have lives of their own. They grow, they change, they reproduce, they survive and they die. Things flow and move within them. A social network is a kind of a human superorganism with an anatomy and physiology, a structure and a function of its own. From bucket brigades to blogosphere, the human superorganism does what no person could do alone. Our local contributions to the human social network have global consequences that touch the lives of thousands every day and help us to achieve much more than the building of towers or destruction of walls. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it and you read. Never stop learning. Thank you. Love and respect.